Hello everyone, it is so good to be with you guys again. I hope you are so excited as I am to be in God's Word and to study His Word together again. In this series, we will look at the life of the prophet Elijah, an Afrikaans who he preferred Elia. I wonder if you've heard about him. We can find his story in the book of Kings in the Old Testament, in 1 Kings 17 and 18, if you want to go and read about his story. And um, yes, I'm very excited to see what God wants to teach us through the, through the life of Elijah. But now, I first want us to look at our new memory verse that we are going to learn today. And we find that in Psalm, right in the middle of the Bible, Psalm 118, verse 14. And I'm going to read it to you from God's Word. The Lord is my strength and song, and He has become my salvation. And I want us to look at the verse now because there are three things that stand out when we look at this verse. Okay, so when we look at Psalm 118 verse 14, the first thing that we find is the Lord is my strength. The second thing is the Lord is my song. And then the third thing is, and he has become my salvation. Okay, so if we look at the first one, the Lord is my strength. You will experience when you don't have the strength or the energy or the motivation to do something that God will give you the strength to do it. The second one is a song. You will often find that when you worship God, you just experience the joy of the Lord. So he will give you a song and put praise on your lips. And then last, but definitely not least, is salvation. When we confess our sins and put our trust in Jesus Christ, He will save us from our sin. And what you will experience is if you have put your trust in God and He has saved you from your sin, automatically you will experience how God will give you strength for things that you usually couldn't um, do. And also you will experience the joy of the Lord and will want to worship him and to sing and praise, um, sing to him and give him praise. Okay, so in today's lesson, we are going to look at the prophet Elijah, but also these two people. The guy on the right is King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Now, King Ahab was Israel's most wicked king. He encouraged people to worship idols. So, he didn't only worship idols himself, he also encouraged other people to worship idols. And if you remember correctly, idols are made of wood or stone and representing false gods. So it was something else that people created and made and then they worship that as their god. Ahab's wicked wife Jezebel brought many ungodly customs from her country and these became the official religion of Israel. Elijah, on the other hand, knew God and truly loved God. He knew that Israel had turned away from God to worship idols. Elijah prayed and asked God to withhold rain so the people would know he truly is the living God. And God chose to answer Elijah's prayer. Elijah's heart was that the people would realize that they need God. So he truly um, prayed and asked God to um, withhold the rain. Okay, so let's have a look at this picture, what happens now. Now you will see that the prophet Elijah goes to visit King Ahab. And if you look at their faces, you will see they are very upset with what he told them. So what happened was Elijah went to King Ahab and he told them, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain in these years except at my word. And this was God's punishment for Israel because they have sinned by turning away from God. And you can imagine, King Ahab was furious. Who gives this guy authority to come and tell us something like this? And soon the drought came making food and water scarce. And now the interesting thing is that you need to realize is that Elijah would also have to go through this drought. But God wanted to provide for Elijah and to see him through this. 
so that Elijah can survive. Okay, so God told Elijah to leave Samaria and to go east to the brook Sherith, where God would protect and care for him. Now, that was a little stream in the mountains. So God told Elijah that he would supply water from the brook and food from the ravens. So that is very interesting. Every morning and every evening, the ravens came, bringing bread and meat to Elijah. So Elijah knew whatever his needs was, God would be his faithful provider. So God did an amazing miracle year looking after him. Just imagine every morning and every evening, here comes the ravens bringing him food. That is just so amazing to even think about it. But unfortunately, the brook did dry up after a while because the drought went on for a few years. But let's see how the Lord would provide for Elijah next. Okay, so you will see now Elijah meeting someone else. So after the brook dried up, God told Elijah to go to a town to a widow. Now a widow is someone whose husband passed away and this lady would take care of Elijah. So Elijah asked this widow to give him some water and bread. She was picking up wood, as you can see in the picture. So he asked her, please give me some water and some bread. And she said she only had a little bit of flour and cooking oil left. And this was her last bit of food. But Elijah told her not to be afraid. Do as you plan, but first make some bread for me. And then for you and your son. So she must have thought, man, this is my only food. And now you're asking me to make bread first for you. I don't know. This, this is quite a bit hectic. But what did Elijah tell her? Not to be afraid. And the next words he said was, yeah, truly amazing. God has said you will continue to have enough flour and oil to make more bread until he sends the rain again. So he says, no, you do this. I know it's your last bit, but God says, I will provide. I will meet your needs, your son needs, and God is also providing for Elijah. And that went on for another three and a half years that Elijah stayed with this lady, with this widow, and that she uh, made food for him, but that God did not let it run dry. Now, if you think with me, and you think of an empty jar. I mean, just every morning you wake up and it's filled again. Yeah, so God truly did a miracle here. Once again, providing for their needs. Okay, so here you will see where Elijah is eating with a widow and his son. And she didn't question him. She obeyed Elijah and she went and made the bread. Although she expected it to be their last meal. But amazing the next morning when she woke up there was flour and oil again so God miraculously provided for their needs day after day for the next three and a half years of the drought um, God kept his promises and provided all their needs as we saw in the life of Elijah now God miraculously provided for all his needs through this drought season and even for the widow and her son for another three and a half years, the oil and the flour never ran out. They had food for the whole length of the drought. And isn't that just amazing to think how God provided for Elijah's needs? First with the ravens, that he provided the food for him, and the stream with the water, and then through the widow, that the food just didn't run out. And I want you to think of ways that God has provided for your needs. Who of you slept in a warm bed last night? Yeah, all of you, hey. And who of you had some breakfast this morning? I'm sure all your hands ra was raised now. And um, who of you need to walk to school? I'm sure most of you can go in a car or a bus or a taxi. When it rains specifically, hey, we've got transport that we can use. We don't need to walk everywhere that we need to go. Although it's sometimes nice, hey, for a bit of exercise. But I want you to think, if we look at the life of Elijah and God providing for his needs, and you think of um, the verse that we just did of Psalm 118, is that God is our salvation. And that is actually our biggest need. 
yes, we need water and we need food and we need shelter. But our biggest need is our salvation and that we need to put our trust in God. And I've, yeah, so I'm just wondering, um, who of you have put your trust in Jesus for your salvation? That you can say, God is my strength and my song and my salvation. Because we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we all are in need of a Savior. Even myself, I had to tell Jesus that I need Him, that I'm sorry for my sin, and that I want to walk with Him. And now, we've previously spoken about it, now it's the process of san sanctification. Okay, and um, yeah, I hope you are encouraged to realize that God can provide all your needs and that He also make provision for your biggest need of salvation. But more than that, I want you and I want to challenge you to be thankful this week for all your needs that God is meeting. Because oftentimes we just get so used to it that we don't truly say thank you to God that He's meeting our needs every single day. And then I also want to um, challenge you to pray for those people whose needs are not met or families that are struggling with illness, with food, maybe their parents lost their jobs now with the COVID. But you can also pray for them that they will experience how God is providing for all their needs. Okay, so I've got Gideon with me and he's going to do the um, questions with us. So I want you to think with Gideon when I ask him the questions, if you know the answer, maybe you are quicker than him. Okay, so let's give it a try and see if Gideon also paid attention. So the first question is, what are the three things that our Bible verse tell us about God? Salvation and song. Song, salvation, and our strength. Okay, so God is our strength, our song, and our salvation. Okay, what did Ahab do instead of worshipping the only true God? He encourages people to um, worship idols. Yes, that was very sad. What did God say he would do to punish the people for worshipping other gods? He it didn't rain for seven years. Yeah, for many years it didn't rain. God withheld the rain. What did the Lord Jesus do so our sins could be forgiven? He died on the cross. He died on the cross. How did God feed Elijah while he was by the brook? Uh, Ravens. Yeah, so the ravens brought food for him every morning and evening. What was God teaching Elijah while he was at the brook? What did you think that Elijah learned that God is his? Provider. God is his, provide and God will see to all his needs. Um, what did the widow think would happen when she used up all her oil and flour to make bread? She would not have food. She would not have food and that they would die um, what can you trust God to do for you if you are his child what will God do for you if you are his child he will provide for you wonderful um, why do you think God lets hard things happen to us why does God sometimes make you go through a difficult time because sin entered the world, entered the world. but God uses it to teach us something eh? Very good answer. Um, what happened when the widow made bread and gave Elijah some first? Did she still have enough food for her left? Yes. And was it her last flour and oil? No. no. What happened every morning? Um, it, got, it, got, it got full again. It was full again. What is the greatest need of all people today? Salvation, that we need God to forgive, forgive um, our, what does God need to forgive, our sin, our sin. And, and you quickly help, what is sin? Um, if, you do something wrong. if you do something wrong, great, thank you Gideon, I think you did very well.